Sometimes God will put an enemy in your life to keep you stirred up. He'll allow critics, doubters, discouragers, even some haters. So when you feel tired and think you want to give up, you'll keep pressing forward, shaking it off, not because you feel like it, but because you don't want to give your enemies the joy of seeing you defeated. Not out of spite, not out of pride, God uses the negative to keep us stirred up. There is no worse feeling than that of invisibility. You know, when you are doing your very best and it goes unrecognized, it makes it kind of harder to want to keep doing it. And when you feel unseen, especially by the people whose attention and approval you crave the most, it can, it can create a compulsion in your life to start doing things that are not even really consistent with your character in order to receive from people a confirmation that can be taken away just as easily as it was given. Don't be fooled by all that fake love. Don't be fooled by these phony smiles, their hugs, their I love yous. Snakes in the grass, leathery. Hear them coming a mile away. I can smell them, I can sniff them, I can see them, I can taste them. Some of you get blinded by them. Your so-called friends, your so-called homies, your so-called partners, your so-called girls. They there for you when everything's great. They're there for you when you balling. They're there for you when you rolling. They're there for when you get there for you when you got money. They're excited, girl. We gonna do this, man, bro. Where we going tonight? Sad story is that when you up, they all riding with you. When you down, there's nobody in the car but you. You are the company that you keep. Meaning. Your circle of friends is an indication of who you actually are, who you are becoming. You show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Because it's just true. The people you surround yourself with are shaping your future. Someone say, check your circle. It's important who you are aligning yourself with. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. That's good news. If you lack wisdom today, get around people that are wise. But look what the second part says. It says literally that a companion of fools suffers harm. Have you ever considered the reason why you're always hurt is because all of your friends are fools? If you're a person where all your friends come to you with their problems, that's because they see something in you. You're more balanced and stable. But you got to remember this old saying, if you're the smartest person in your group, you need a new group. Some of my enemies, I feel like I need to write them a check. If they hadn't have been against me, I wouldn't have prayed so hard. If they hadn't have made fun, I would have given up sooner. If they hadn't have told me I couldn't do it, didn't have what it takes, I might have been complacent, settled where I was. It was their opposition that pushed me forward. Many times, God will use your enemies to catapult you to success more than your friends. You spend your life performing for a crowd, it'll kill you. And you're like, I'm good. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a singer. I don't perform for people. It's gotten much deeper than that now. It's the feeling that we get when we start offering ourselves up in a form that is more impressive to people but is not authentic to us is the mode that we all get tempted to get into when we start trying to bring a version of ourselves to a situation that we think will make a good impression. Here's how you know if someone's your friend. A, you can tell them bad news and they'll listen. They won't tell you why, you know, you're stupid and why that bad thing happened to you and how something worse happened to them once. And, you know, derail the whole conversation. You know, it's like, go away from that person. They're not helpful to you. And they're not helpful to themselves either. You gotta surround yourself with people who want the best for the best part of you. And that's a really good way of deciding who you should have around you. Don't complain about the person that betrayed you. If they walked away, they didn't set you back. They set you up for the fullness of your destiny. If they lied about you, tried to push you down, overlooked you, it may not have been fair. But if God allowed it, He knows how to use it for your good. Do not be misled. 
So, so like, don't like, don't sit around and be like, I think this is what's going on. No, wait, wait, this is maybe what's happening. Don't, you don't have to come up with theories. Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Have you ever stopped to consider the reason why you're never able to finish anything you start? It's not because you're not gifted. It's not because you're not talented. The reason why you can't finish it is because you lack character. Because every time you step out, you don't have the stuff it takes to finish. Yet the only way you're going to get rid of bad character is you're going to have to actually go ahead and get rid of bad company. The moment you remove bad company, you're going to start getting some good character. Somebody say, check your search. You've got to upgrade your friends. It ain't nothing bad. You just got to upgrade people in your life. But if you're the smartest person in your group, you need a new group. You cannot be the go-to person in the group. Don't worry about it. You have a gift. That you solve problems all the time. You can earn a lot of money. Here. You know what people pay for in this country? They pay for expertise in this country. The moment you're an expert at something in America, you can make a million dollars. All you got to do is be an expert at one thing. Sometimes there's something inside of you telling you that you are not enough. And since you feel like you're not enough, you start trying to do all this stuff to prove that you are enough. The problem is, the people that you're trying to prove it to aren't even paying attention. Because they're so busy trying to prove to somebody else who isn't paying attention, who isn't paying attention to the other person, and now we're all posting and proving, but inside we're dying. And you've got to know the places that you cannot go, whether it's on your phone, whether it's in your mind, because there are some places that you need to stay away from on purpose. Because if you go, it's gonna kill your joy, it's gonna kill your contentment, it's gonna kill your sanity, it's gonna kill your peace. I don't know how many different ways I can say this. So many of us have to learn this the hard way. They act like they got love for you. Have your friends, have your family, have your relationships. But make sure you be you pay hey you pay close attention to the circle to your company that you keep because when you need them the most I promise you they will turn your back on you. You need to find you a group of friends and you need to know in your heart of hearts that if you down they gonna pull you up and if they down you gonna pull them up. You know I always say. You show me your crowd, I'll show you your future. If you want to know where you are, what put you on, look in your cell phone. Because your cell phone will tell me who you talk to. And whoever you spend your time talking to, that's the put you on. You cannot surround yourself with blindness and expect to see. Can't run around with prejudiced people and not be prejudiced. You can't run around with arrogant people and not be arrogant. You cannot run with packs of angry women and expect to be happy and fulfilled. You cannot hang out with a bunch of defeated, going nowhere, no vision men and be an overcomer. You are who you hang around. Because if I am down and everybody else is down around me, then down becomes normal. But what makes down terrible is when you are down and you can still see up. I'm begging you, man. I'm begging you from a man to a man. Let go. Let go. Let go of these people who you know aren't for you. Here's a big one. If you're not feeling it, find new friends. I'm being dead serious about this. This one is real big for me. Who you hang out with is a huge deal. And again, these are all tried and true things, right? We've heard the, you're the whatever of the five friends you spent, like, that's real. That's, that one, put in the bank. Like, if you're not feeling it, you need to go to meetup.com and go to 10 meetups of people that are hungry. Like it's unbelievable what happened to me when I got into the Silicon Valley world and started meeting like Mark Zuckerberg and like Ev Williams and Sock and like Travis. Like it changed my life. This town, actually it's fun for me to tell this story here. South by Southwest 2007 changed my life because I 
hung out, I forced myself to go to a Web 2.0, which later became social media, the current state of the internet conference, South by Southwest, and I was looking at and all these kids, and by the way, this is when tech wasn't cool, straight fucking nerds, but they were trying to change shit. They weren't here for kicks and giggles. They weren't here to hook up. They were here to like change the world. Like I'm gonna build a product that is gonna be in every single person's hand, like, and they have. Like the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Ubers, they did. And, and, uh, and it, it was the biggest impact of my career and it's something I think a lot about now. So anyway, real practical. If you feel motivated by this conversation or you're intrigued by it, add one new winner friend. Like, you know what I mean? Had one new winner friend and cut one loser friend. Like, yeah, I know he's been your boy since fourth grade, but he sits at home and fucking smokes weed and plays 2K all day. (laughs) Like, you can only love him so much. If you look around, take a look at the five people who you spend the most time with. Those people reflect not only who you are, but who you're gonna become. So to me, once you've made the decision that you deserve to live a life that reflects every desire that you could ever have and that you are capable of, of living at your full potential, then the next step is making the choice that you're gonna surround yourself with people who've got the same mindset. Because even if all of y'all have not reached your goals, if you're striving together, that'll hold you accountable to keep moving forward. And they can pull you back on track when you get off track, right? That's really important. I think beyond that, I think that the people around you being very selective of who you put yourself around is so important because ultimately the people who you place yourself around are going to be your support system once you do get to your destination. Here's something real. Go home, cut one, cut your loserous loser friend <laughs> and go find a winner friend. Go like go somewhere. Go somewhere like go to like go go to meetup.com, go to a Facebook group, join some shit, DM the 800 people that you think are make sure they're not bullshitting. Uh, they're like doing what you want and just make one new friend. I see it. Like D-Rock, like he's right like it's unbelievable to watch my team. Like they get faster, they get smarter, they get more confident, right? It's real, man. It's real confidence and like hunger gets passed on to each other. It's like team dynamics. It's why like a great player that sucks shit can fuck a team up. Like go audit your circle, add one more winner, decrease one more.